I would like to welcome Michelle Memron, who's here, the director of The Rest I Make Up, the wonderful film uh, that she made with Maria or Irene Fornes, the legendary off-off-Broadway writer and director. Michelle, welcome. Thank you for allowing us to screen the film as part of the International Online Theatre Festival at the Theatre Times. We're delighted to be screening it. And I wanted to congratulate you on the film because I think it's a beautiful portrait of uh, Irene Fornes. Um, and I wanted to start by asking you about your uh, about the making of the film and when you started filming Irene uh, process that of course is very visible in the film were you very were you sure then that that it was going to end up as the film that we've just seen the rest I make up uh, well first of all thank you so much for having me um, and it's been a delight to be in the festival um, you know I, when we first started the film I wasn't sure of anything I, the only thing I was sure of is that um, I would call Irene up and, and uh, I'd say, uh, are you ready to work today? And she would be like, you know, or she'd say, are we going to work today? And so, so we, were, we were very much focused on the process of making the film and not so much the product of, is this going to be a film? We, I mean, we were so engaged and so enjoying what was happening in the moment. Um, and then, you know, as time went on, Irene would be like, is this ever going to... It's never going to become anything, um, and you know it. It took me 15 years to actually, from the first time we filmed in Brighton Beach in 2003 to the last edit at the end of 2017, to you know, to actually tell this story. So I think um, we were so involved and engaged in, in what was in each other and in you know um, the traveling that went on in the film and um, capturing these moments that we weren't so much focused on um, what it was going to actually become, you know. So I'm, I'm actually thrilled that it became a film. For years, I would say, people would say, when is that, are you still working on that thing? And, and when is it going to be, you know, you know how to, or how did it turn out? And I, I'd say, it's still turning. And um, 2025, premiere in 2025. So um, we got in a little before that, which is good. You did. And, and her work is very present. Irene, as a playwright and, and as a director, is very present at the beginning of the film, um, where, where you contextualise her writing, her emergence in the off-off Broadway uh, uh, movement, and then it recedes as the film progresses. Talk me through a little bit the structure of the film and the decision to, to really focus on her as, as a writer in that early section. Well, I think um, it's a great question. You know, I think one of the the struggles that we had um, with structuring the story was how do you, um, we knew that it couldn't be a, um, a sort of PBS-like documentary on, you know, going into um, Irene's full history with actors reading the scripts. We thought for a little while that we were going to have actors reading excerpts from her plays. Mm -hmm. And um, and as the structure emerged, it was very clear that, um, it became very clear that uh, Irene no longer remembered her plays by the time that I met her. And so it was very much a collaboration. So it didn't feel true to the collaboration to have her plays you know, in, in, you know, woven throughout, because that would be me inserting that in, not Irene. Um, so, so we, we poo-pooed that decision. And then, um, and then it became, uh, I mean, so everything you see in the film is, we, we follow Irene's lead. So it's generated by her and her memories. So if she doesn't remember it, we don't, we try, we try not to include it in the film. Um, but then how do you just have, you know, how do you introduce her? You know, like, how do we, are people, you know, so we have that intro section, which is about, you know, seven minutes long um, uh, of the sort of backstory of people talking about uh, her work. And, and I had archival of her plays that she had given me on video. And so we were able to, you know, do little bits and pieces of the plays. But again, those, even if we were to do larger sections of those plays, the archival doesn't stand on its own. And so it, it just, it was, it, we didn't want to do that either. So um, it's like a little taste of like, this is a playwright who you don't know, probably, who you should know. And now we're going to meet her and we're going to spend the next 70 so minutes, like really being with her. But we, but it was hard. It's because it's a very different style than, you know, the rest of the film. 
you know, in the beginning. But, um, but I think it, you know, I think it does launch you. I think we want it to be launched into the story, into her life. I think, I think not only does it launch us into her life, but it also, we get a sense of what she's meant in terms of her position within the American, uh, the broader American theater. And I think your choice of, of, of figures who, who talk about her work is really interesting. I mean, Edward Albee's point that she takes stuff from the unconscious and that's where, and, and that's the starting point uh, for, for her creation. And, and that she discovers what she's writing by writing it, I think is a wonderful summary of, of her as a writer. So talk to me a little bit about the figures that you use. So Paula Vogel, um, Albie, uh, and of course, John Guare, who appears <laughs> uh, at, at one point in, in, a, in a fortuitous encounter while you're filming. Yes, so I mean, early in the process, um, you know, there were various uh, the actual interviews of others um, had different different stages. So in the beginning, um, I was really interviewing people as a way to um, invite them into back into Irene's life. So I would have an interview, and I went through a whole list of people with Irene, and I said, um, "Who who are these? Who should I interview? Let's go through the list. These are all the names." And I used your book a lot to um, to, to you know. I had a list of all the people that were listed, you know, interviewed in your book on Irene, and um, and she would say, oh, I love her. Oh, I hate him. Or I love him. Go, oh, yes, do that person. That person's great. And so um, we have this ongoing list. And so I just started reaching out to people and saying, you know, could I interview you? And then when I would interview them, I would show that I, we would talk and I'd say, when was the last time you saw Irene? Do you know what's happening? You know, we're trying to get the community involved in, in um, you know, coming to visit. And, and so in the beginning, it was really like, who's... Who, who is willing to be interviewed and um, and then um, just going out and interviewing and then doing the research and going out and interviewing them but it was it was more it wasn't so calculated it, because I didn't know um, you know who the, a lot of these people were um, and uh, and I was always surprised like Edward Albee wrote back immediately and was like sure come out to Montauk um, and you know Paula Vogel was of course great and and Migdalia Cruz, we, you know, that was an early, early meeting and we met together and um, Eduardo Machado. So these were all sort of staggered uh, interviews that we did. And then later we interviewed Morgan Janess, her agent and Brooke Berman. And, um, but yeah, so, and you know, John Guare, we ran into on the street and then I followed up with him and Connie Congdon and we had a separate interview that doesn't actually make it into the film. But everyone that I contacted, and Tony Kushner and I went back and forth, and, and ultimately we didn't end up meeting until recently when he saw the film at, Metro, at Metrograph, um, and we had a Q&A there, which was really lovely. But people were, for the most part, were really, um, they wanted to talk about Irene, they wanted to talk about her influence, and they wanted to talk about, a lot of these playwrights wanted to talk about the influence of Off Off Broadway, and like how you know, uh, you know, how, how, if they weren't a part of it, how they had nostalgia for not, you know, for it, even though they weren't a part of it. And if they were a part of it, you know, how, how much of, you know, their creative life they owe to it, you know? So I think, and Irene was at the point when I met her, she was talking almost, um, I mean, I would say the two things she talked about most were off, off Broadway and um, Cuba. Mm. Because she was oh. living further and further in the past. Yeah, I mean, and that's a. I mean, because of course you you travel to Cuba. We'll return to that. But 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 off of Broadway and 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 New York and and where she lived just off um, uh, Christopher Street, uh, Sheridan Square, um, was uh, was just such a part of her life. I mean, I remember the first time uh, I I visited New York and and stayed with her, and she walked me round all the. The places in her plays, um, and there was a real pride in 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 that part of New York. She it, 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 it's where her heart was, and there's that extraordinary moment in 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 Miami where she talks about what New York means to her as as a playwright and as a human being. And you film at, uh, parts of, of 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 that part of New York in in black and white. How important was that context in terms of positioning um, Irene? Uh, you, I mean, the, the, the context of, I mean, I knew we, we, 
I mean, it was so important. It was so important to the film and it was so important. To, I mean, it was the place that, um, where she became a playwright. I mean, at Judson, Judson, you know, Poets Church that was so influential in her, in her career and, um, and Promenade and all of those early works and the, the, and her being, you know, um, I mean, she loved, she loved the word bohemian as we've talked about, but she loved, she just the whole, um, ethos of that time and that the that you could you know that they were I mean we talk about it in in the film about like they were going to get props on from on the streets you know from dumpsters and they were you know it wasn't about you know these big lavish productions it was like about like specifically picking the right things you know it was it was um and thrift and that's her love of thrift stores and so that it all you know and and I think that is very much I think off off Broadway and Cuba are very much linked in this way of of making do and her growing up in the depression in Cuba, and so she knew how to do it. You know, she knew how to make something with very little, um, and and I, I think that um, and so so how do we how do we make that time come alive in the film when it was so alive in her mind and um, and it was just a moment. You know, uh, I filmed all this black and white Super Eight footage. Over the years, I had friends just come and I said, well, just go film the, around Irene's apartment and go film, you know. And so all of that stuff was recent, you know, had been filmed, you know, um, it was during that time. It wasn't archival footage that we got. Um, so so I knew that that Alpha Broadway was going to be a, a, a part of the film. And I knew that we were going to want to have these textures to be able to go back and forth. Um, but I, you know, I, I think it speaks so much to also who she became and, you know, and her, and, and the idea of making do in the moment, you know, the rest I make up, you know, making do with, um, if she doesn't, you know, if she doesn't remember it, she makes up a story. If she can't, you know, if she doesn't have, um, you know, if she's cold, she puts on seven layers and, and we can go outside, you know, I mean, that's, um, that was the, like I'd never met somebody like that mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. That was um, an artist through and through, and um, and you know the work was the most important thing, you know, and and um, yeah, it was it was a revelation to me. So I think I mean one of the things I love is is that you you film that moment of the launch of the Off Off Broadway book that Steve Bottoms had in, in New York. And I know how much Irene, um, you know, loved being interviewed by Steve um, Bottoms um, for that book. And, and it's a wonderful moment because it brings so many people together from that, from that movement, people who are no longer with us and people who, who define that really key moment in, in American counterculture, I think. 